Welcome to Stories, Wisdom, and Recipes. My name is Lawrence Pugliese. This is our garden party episode, also known as the OK Patio Show. Thank you, Brian. He dubbed it that. We have many guests to share with you. They are Senor Sam Stavala, whose every move will be monitored by the Sam Cam. Jack Evans, Tom Flannery, Bob Schlesinger, Lori Cadden Foley, and of course, our good friends, OK Patty. We'll be cooking up some ribs and burgers and doggers. Let me do a little spin. How was that? Was that good, Mark? Some veggie burgers for the vegetarians in the crew. We're going to focus on theater, jazz, and the state of social affairs, those local, worldwide, and perhaps outside a few stratospheres, too. Happy dog days of summer as Labor Day comes into view. Did you guys hear about the AFL-CIO? Did you hear about that? Missed that one. AFL-CIO. Yeah, how about them? Well, well, well. It seems there's a communication breakdown. It's always the same. Some Democratic politicos are having a nervous breakdown. This sort of organizational reshuffle drives them insane. Doesn't bother us much, though. We're just having fun here on the patio with friends from Channel 61, from your neighborhood in Scranton and Dunmore, all over northeastern Pennsylvania. Time to put all that crazy Washington, D.C., Harrisburg, Scranton City Hall stuff on the back burner and enjoy your, your compatriots. Without further ado, OK Patty, for you. Thank you, Lawrence. Compatriots, a fellow countryman of the same country. Yes, I got it right. Welcome back. This is Stories, Wisdom, and Recipes. My name is Lawrence Pugliese, and uh, you just heard a song by Gillian Welsh called Dear Someone, as portrayed by O.K. Patty. I hope you enjoyed it. Now we have at the table a couple of... The table. <laughs> you know, at the table, the picnic... 
a couple of good a couple friends. Of blaggards. A couple of blaggards. Blag a blagette and a blaggard. Uh, yeah, Is that right. the proper gender? Uh, well, I, I don't want to segue That's into what it. we're you doing later on. Yeah, we well, see. He just these guys are so charismatic. They drew it away from me in a moment's uh -huh. time. Wait till you hear the conversation we're going to have with Bob Schlesinger and Lori Cadden Foley. We're going to talk about jazz and the blues and uh, the Scranton Jazz Festival, the first annual, coming up August 6th and 7th. And then later in the uh, broadcast, you're going to hear OK Patty once again. Senor Sam Stavala is cooking on the grill. Doggers and uh, burgers, sausage, you name it. Uh, Jack Evans is here, as well as Tom Flannery. So please, stay tuned. Thank you for watching. All right, guys, you ready for some questions? Looking forward to it, Larry. Okay, who took them? Oh, there they are. I was given a, a test the other day. I think it was pre-calculus, and I jotted these down. Pre-calculus. Pre-calculus, yeah. Pre-calculated. What's the slope of a vertical line? You got me. There you got isn't me. a slope, is there? Does this no, have anything be, to do with jazz, untrue. though? No. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Undefined. There you, you exposed my... Uh, a weak spot? No, one of my weak spots. Got and no, no, here's a real, here's a real question. A real Why don't you show them the poster real quick? Here, Mark. The first annual Scranton Jazz Festival. Saturday, August 6th, and Sunday, August 7th, 2 p.m. to 9 p.m. As you can see, $10 per day. Thank you. Best bargain in town. And these acts Besides come... Besides the new plays that are coming up in just a short while. Yeah, Jack and... Uh, and Diane. A little segue Jack to those town. guys, too. Yeah, John Cougar Melancap. Yeah, Melancap. Yeah, yeah, all right. Don't ever do that again, I'm right? I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> She's one a of bad my girl. Things. She is. I want to ask you. You have a show on? I do, yes. She has I do. a show too. She does, she's very, yeah. She's very uncomfortable yeah. being the other person there. I'm going to be on your show on Friday. Yes. So we're really like oversaturating the air. Exactly. The it's great though. Too much. It's well, great here's a real very question. Very innovative. For you. Is you think innovative? Uh, I want to ask you why do you think that um, jazz and blues, those forms of music, warrant their own festival here in Scranton? Do you want to take that? Why not, you know, well, a lounge lizard festival of some sort? Why jazz and blues? Why'd you, why'd you choose that? Well, because last year we did a summer music festival, actually the last two years, but last year, more importantly, at Hanlon's Grove, because the last one, the year before that, it was still at the pavilion at Naog. And last year, because it was the first year of Hanlon's Grove, we did the music festival there. And the second day of the music festival was all jazz. I remember that. Was in, well, yeah, because that's how you joined our group then. That's why we're here today. That's right. that's right. And because of that incredible turnout, we, Marco Marcinko, of course, and all of us have, because Mr. Who? Jazz, stop it. Sorry. Mr. Jazz himself and that. Doug Smith. <laughs> We, they play a coda, which is the celebration of the arts at uh, the Delaware Water Gap, and it's a great jazz weekend. And we were all talking about it, and we said, wouldn't it be great if we could do that next year here? So we just thought, because of the audience and the fact that so many people love jazz in this area, which we, we knew but we didn't really know based on the turnout. We're going to we find out real soon, right. I'll yeah. tell you we that. We figured we could do it. It's ten bucks a ticket. That's all you have to know. It's ten bucks a ticket. Me? I'm sorry, yeah, Mark. Go ahead. Anyway, My time's we figured coming we up. could do it and make it work. And so we got a small group of people together, went and got the money we needed through private donations, through the, one of the grants that the commissioners gave out. Electric City's been great. Electric City's incredible. They're one of they're, they're doing, we're getting the cover of Electric City to uh, come out tomorrow. And That's tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow. That'll be July 28th. Yeah, July 28th. We'll be on the cover for that, which of course we were all part of the other day yeah. at Hanlon's Grove. I can't and believe you flashed. That just blew stop, my mind. I did not. But anyway. Well, that's not what I saw. Stop it. But we Sorry. had, we, <laughs> we did have a great time. Yes. And they were, they're supporting us and big stores, Scranton Times helping us out. So we've got some great people together to get this thing rolling. And as you know, it's rolling. And hopefully oh, with your help out there on August 6th and August 7th, Saturday and Sunday from 2 to 9, we will make it all happen. Ten bucks. Ten dollars. Ten bucks a day. Have, and you can't have, beat that price. What do we have? One, and two, have, three, four, five, seven acts. Ten. Now, yeah. I want to ask you another question. We have seven acts a day. Ten bucks for those seven acts. And these guys are from New York City. We're talking with John Coates Jr. Paris, Paris, France. Paris, Best France, from around here. Clarence right. Spady, the Dixie Best from stars, Clarence is Marco. terrific. Um, there's, Steve there's Rudolph. Of, we have Dave Liebman. Uh, I mean, I showed this itinerary to um, a music student from Duquesne. And he looked at it, he was blown away. He couldn't yeah, believe it's the a great ever. lineup. But For I ten bucks a ticket, I'd right. be blown away too. Right. Now, besides these, these acts, 
that we mentioned here. We're also uh, going to have a little bit of food, right? Shooky. Shooky's food doing all the Mark food Schulter's up there. And the other place, are they going to be involved? The place well, we talked about? Mark, uh, we, we've got a situation here. We're in the first year of the yeah. project. We're not worrying about food. Okay. Mark Schuchter is going to take care of it for us. And uh, our Make main concern happen. right now is that the music is it's top where it should shelf. be. Right. We got an unbelievable lineup here. And, uh, you know, we want to turn the people of Scranton on to jazz. I mean, it's time. I think you're jazz right. is big city music, its roots are in the big city. And uh, now it's time to uh, establish a jazz festival here. And that's why Lori and Doug Smith and Marco Marcinko and, and all those involved with the project are really uh, working hard to make this work. I think you Scranton, is, uh, my, and you as yeah. well, I think Scranton is a jazz town and a yeah. blues town. I really yeah. do. I, I see folks always looking for a venue to catch a good jazz right. band. And it, unfortunately, they don't exist yet. Exactly. But this festival, I think they're going to come out in droves. Well, so. some people have told me it won't work. But I, I want to tell you uh, something right no now. No, no, We no. don't listen it's, to those people. Prove them wrong, folks right. who are watching. It is new, it's innovative, and it's something that needs to be done here in Scranton now. Okay, another question for you. All right, this is a serious one. I know a lot of people might be taken aback by this question, but how long have you two guys been seeing each other? <laughs> are you going to... I'm not... Uh, the mum's the word. <laughs> It was a secret. I you take just the let fifth. it out on Channel 61. My God, I'm Especially not saying that. Especially if Myers watching I'm this sorry. right now. You know, I made a My mistake. My wife Valerie's watching uh, this. That's right. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. That was a question for Jack and Tom. Yes. Right? That's How long have they been seeing each other? How long have they been together? Boy, let's get elected. How, How long have you been Rube together? Get Rube Lomax in on that one. Hey, Larry, excuse me. Who is Rube? Yeah. I just have to comment that this is the best hot dog I've ever had. <laughs> that's Pat Finnerty from OK Patty. There's a reason why this hot dog is the best hot dog I've ever had. Tell them why. Because Senor, Senor Stavala cooked it. And this is such an honor to be eating this food. First night. <laughs> We're going to have these hot dogs at the jazz yeah, festival. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Senor Sen will be up there cooking them for well, us. Oh, yeah. He loves jazz. He'll be back there, but he won't be cooking. Uh, all right, let me ask you another question. That was just a joke, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't, they didn't know about that joke. question. I wanted to see Man. her reaction. Uh, did I react? Yeah, you I did. You laughed yes, hysterically. Now, in your, in your opinions, both of you, you guys are, are um, co-organizers, along with a bunch of other people, of a jazz and blues fest. Now, what do you think, where do you think jazz and blues rank, in, uh, in your opinion, when reviewing the creations that have come from you, the society here in the United States of America? Where, where does jazz... And where, does, where do the blues rank in all that we've created as a society? And you, and they you know. are American. You know, the roots of jazz are in the big city. Uh, Didn't you just say that? I know that. I, mean, I, I need to emphasize that fact. It's like that the $10 you can get this crap that you go out with. That's very oh. well put. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you're emphasizing that. Because it's $10... You can't beat Wait, this price. I had a deep, heavy question. Come on. Uh, Larry, okay. No, if Lori would allow me to answer I'm sorry, the question, Larry. I'm trying to sound intellectual here and probably uh, will not do so. Come off You'll that be way, successful. But, but, uh, you are no, a good actor. It, it, it is. It, we are at a point in the ball game where it is an American art form. And uh, it allows musicians to go to places where, you know, uh, your traditional rock and roll. Uh, semi-structured, a lot of music is structured. This allows musicians to go off on tangents. And while we do have vocalists involved, most of it's instrumental. And uh, I, I don't know, I, I've always been a great jazz fan. Me too. And, uh, you know, I, maybe it's because I've been such a jazz fan over my lifetime that I feel that it's time that we put all our resources together and establish this. It's never been established before here, and yet it could be a reflection of our whole area in terms of new development in the, in the cultural development of our, of our whole uh, scenario here. And, uh, as a city, I mean, as a region. As a city, as a region. It gives us some more culture, Scranton, a little more dynamic. Get a lot of people from Wilkes-Barre to come to this. So you know, we're, It's done in a beautiful setting. You can't beat this Hanlon's setting. Grove Neo at, at Neog. Yep. Now, yourself, what do you think about jazz and blues? Where does it rank in terms of what we create, what we've created as a, as a society here in the United States? I mean, baseball, apple pie, jazz and blues? You well, know? I mean, 
I love jazz. Personally, I love it. Um, it's not that I grew up loving it. I sort of learned to love it later in life. But now that I do, and I try to go to as many places that offer jazz, because when you get, in, I mean, when you're younger, it's rock and roll, and I still love rock and roll. Yeah, I like but, I mean, I love it. But there's something special and really deep, and the, the way that these musicians play their instrument, and you watch them, it's soulful. It comes right from their heart and soul, right through through that instrument, unlike what I think other types of music do. And again, not to criticize, because I love all forms of music, but jazz just makes you feel like your body, your heart and soul's in it. It just comes in, you know, from your toes right through. And I think that that's what people have loved and learned, and, and the reason they embrace it. And, and to, to, for us to have it here for young people, because I never really experience that kind of stuff. I mean, I love big band music. My father always used to play that, but, you know, and that has elements of it. But but so for us to give young people an opportunity, right, Bob, and to enjoy it. Like and, well, no, but these you know, young kids who know, could learn and like it chicken. earlier than no, we do now, you know what that. I'm saying? No, that was a, both of you guys are really, are, I think. It's the it's what it is. The, the guys just are so into their music. And they are, and there's so a class incredible. as well in the way yeah. they carry themselves, right. you know, uh, uh, the musicianship. Oh, very it's incredible. Very you know? But no, all the jazz musicians that I've ever had the opportunity to work with over the years, because we produce jazz festivals uh, through the Scranton Public Theater and that kind of thing. But uh, really, we're, we're, at a, we're at the point in time right now where this is new. Scranton is emerging, re-emerging uh, as, a, as a, a, a city. And if we don't have something like this to offer a lot of the New Yorkers, Philadelphians, a lot of the New Jersey people who are moving into our region who are going to demand uh, a festival like this. And this is our first year. We hope this is going to go on forever and ever. Right, and ever. exactly. We can be in our rocking chairs going, remember that first? Exactly. Yeah. But remember that's the, the thing. It could just get bigger you know. and better. Oh, yeah. You know what? Also, you mentioned people from outside coming in and saying, hey, this is a hip city with a lot of different things to, to uh, get into, including jazz. But there are a lot of folks born and bred here who want to stay here, and, and they look for things to, Diversity. to right. do locally. Yeah, yeah. They, they don't want to just be doing the same thing. They want to be going to see a jazz band, a rock and roll band. It'll keep them inspired to stay. That's right. You know, and, and uh, have them take another look. at. Well, you know, Scranton, it is a cool you know, place. You know, it, well, go ahead. I was just going to say, it's what Scranton is now evolving into, what it's been. It's it, Everything comes full circle. And Scranton was the hot spot years ago yes, and I was. think with you know local Big government band. and Big the band. stuff Dorsey yeah Brothers. they Dorsey. played here in the Scranton Sirens Marco has a picture of them which you'll have that shows Jimmy and Tommy Dorsey in at the old, at the Comerford Theater, which is now being re revived and being used. That's the Ritz. R the Ritz. Right. And that was the old Comerford. Right. And they have a picture of them, and they were called the Scranton Sirens. And Jimmy and Tommy Dorsey were both in wow. that year. So this is so a, jazz isn't new to this area. It, we're no. just going back to one, one, our one thing I do want, I need to emphasize, the though, is that, see, the thing uh, is, around here we have some terrific jazz musicians. And a great history. And, and what we want to do is bring in some of the Philadelphia and New York jazz musicians and some of the guys who live in the, in the uh, Delaware Water Gap area in the Poconos and integrate them with some of our best. Because we and do a Just to prove hugely talented. that the guys that we have here can play with the best in Philly, can play with the best in New York, can play with the best in the Poconos. We're not a second class. And, 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 the, and a great city. thing about this is, is that the jazz music community in most of the big cities is very small. You know, everybody knows one another. And so the word of mouth that will come out of this festival, we're hoping, will go back to Philadelphia, go back to New York, go back to the Poconos and say, Whoa, what are they doing in Scranton? Yeah, we're going back to What are they doing in Scranton and Wilkes Barre? Yeah. But you know so, what though? They played last excellent. year some of these guys and girls and they said to Marco, I'm like, I, I can't because of the turnout that the we response, had, like I said, yes. the response and the way these local musicians play and played with them, they were blown away by it. That's so excellent. it's all progress everything's being everything's progressive here, Larry, from what's going on with the city in general to everything else we're trying to do and you can't help but just jump on and that th band This way. fits and, and those right. folks who have never gone to a jazz concert and there might be a few, what, what would you uh, say to them to get them out? To this for ten dollars a ticket, you, it's the best <laughs> ticket in town. I'm going to look right in the camera right now. That is the best ticket in town. You cannot get away 
for on a Saturday from 2 o'clock in the afternoon to 9 o'clock at night, you're spending $10. In that $10, it's basically a dollar and a quarter or an hour or whatever it breaks down to. You can't beat that price. And the musicians that you're going to see are world class on both days. And, you know, I, I don't know what else to say. We should, you should turn out in droves for this. And that $10 is not going into our pockets. It's going into the future of this jazz festival because it costs a few bucks to put this thing to on. To bring these this guys the, in, to, to pay to, them to, for their to service. To pay for the regional musicians. Well, you know, we, we're getting a lot of people who are, are giving us money. And Senor San Stavala. Uh, he's the president of Sons of Italy. Oh, yeah. We can us a check. hot dogs yeah. we can get afterwards. Yeah, we're going to have to, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. they're going to be there at the Jazz Festival. <laughs> yes, too. they will. Yes, they will. Um, but uh, a, lot of, a lot of big corporations and small community groups are, are helping out yes, so are. that we can get these acts. Well, the and corporate community is very important in this. Yes, it is. If yes, we don't have them supporting it, well, we can't do what we're doing now. No. You know, we've been working hard on this. I have That's another right. question for you guys because we're, we're running out of time. We have Tom Flannery. Great and player. Jack Evans, Great yes. director, actor. Uh, in the wings, waiting to speak to you here on Stories, Wisdom, and Recipes. Thank you so much for tuning in. Right now we're talking to Bob Schlesinger and uh, Lori Cadden Foley about the Scranton Jazz Festival 2005, first annual. We also had uh, OK Patty, and we're going to have them again in a few moments, so make sure you stay tuned. A lot of talent tuned. in this area. A lot of talent. In, in this yard. In this yard. I'm honored. In the yard. I'm honored. <laughs> Uh, those burgers are looking good, by the way. Can I give Lori a kiss now? Yes, oh. you can. We Mary, outed you Mary, guys. You we outed you guys. You might as well right. kiss. Let's see some. I don't know about tongue action, though. I, I want to thank. No, no, no. We got to no. thank a few people, though. <laughs> Wendy Butler in Electric City for yes. covering this yes. thing. Mayor Chris Doherty for making it possible at the Hamlin's Grove. The county commissioners. The well, Bob Cordero, uh, AJ Munchak. Yeah. But if you haven't come up the Hamlin's Grove, this is a beautiful spot for a jazz festival. And, you know, it's two days, and it's well worth the price you of admission. You can't miss it. can't miss it. Let me ask you, this is the last question for both of you. We're going to, again, August 6th and 7th, Hanlon's Grove, the Scranton Jazz Festival. Nayog Park. Nayog Park. 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 Part of the revival of Nayog Park. From 2 until 9, 9 p.m. both days, Saturday and Sunday, 10 bucks a pop. Look for all the information in your local papers. And um, I want to ask you guys now, I ask this to everybody. It has nothing to do with the Jazz Festival. What at present most concerns you and what at present inspires you most? No, you I don't defer. have to think of it. <laughs> Larry, you're putting me on the spot. Philosophically, we live in a beautiful area here. We don't know how good we have it here. And with programs like this, projects like this, with the new plays that Jack and uh, Tom are going to talk about, with the current productions that we're doing over at McDade Park, we have an opportunity with what the Scranton Cultural Center is doing. We have an opportunity to take the cultural, professional, cultural development of our region to a new level. And that's what inspires me, keeps me around here, wants to bring people back into this area. And uh, hopefully we'll make it a little bit more peaceful, make it a little bit more uh, loving. The area or the world? And uh, the whole area. Yeah. You know, it's a great area. But I don't know, the, the, the arts always, uh, performing arts, always help to make people a little bit uh, more happier, I would hope. Open, open to each other. Open yeah, to I mean, it's, we're here to be entertained. To themselves, even. One of the great things of uh, human beings is to be entertained. And this is going to be top flight entertainment for 10 bucks a ticket. It can't be. So you're inspired by a good number of things you just mentioned. And what are you concerned about? What am I concerned about? I'm concerned about the environment. I'm concerned about the war in Iraq. I'm concerned about uh, human beings learning to get along better and the whole big scheme of things. And, uh, you know, I know I'm, I don't know if I'm going to necessarily do anything to change that, but we're going to work towards it through our efforts in the theater, through the musicians' effort with the jazz festival, through Lori's efforts on TV and promoting what she does, through you, Larry, allowing us to be on your show. So as artists, as, as citizens, we're going to communicate, get to know each other better, reflect on the challenges we face. I hope so. And maybe make a little bit of a difference. And this I hope jazz it makes some sense right now. You do. You make total sense. You sound like a very deep, impassioned individual. And it's, it's a pleasure to have that. you on the show, Bob Schlesinger. Pleasure, man. And now Lori Cadden Foley. What, what? What, is the, what is the key to world peace? Well, of course. Yeah, well, no. <laughs> no of course no, the global what, what issues you? concern me. But I think because I'm trying to 
be more concerned with what goes on in my everyday life. I, I, I'm very concerned with negativity and greed. And I think Good if we point. focus on the good stuff we have and we look at what we are and the fact that we get up every day and not to be overly philosophical but that we can put our two feet on the ground and do something just do it because you can and so I'm I I that's the stuff I'm concerned with stop the negativity and be positive because that's what's that's good for all of us and of course the things that inspire me are people who do that every day of their lives who get up and do and do and just because they can and because they want to make this place and therefore make the world a better place, then that's what I'm concerned about. And I'm, I'm grateful. People need to just be grateful. And I think if they were more grateful, there'd be less of other craziness happening. That was, that was a better answer than No, both of your answers. You guys are very intelligent individuals, can, can very nice individuals. Thank, thank you for being on the show. It's true. Love. It's a good thing. Thank you. Thank you for being on the show. Oh. Mary, I'm not going to kiss you. But <laughs> Please. The yeah. microphone. God bless. <laughs> His mic fell up. <laughs> All right, once again, Bob Schlesinger and Lori Cadden-Foley here on Stories, Wisdom, and Recipes. Thank you so much for being here. And now we're going to go to Senior Sam Stavala for a few moments before you hear another tune by OK Patty entitled Fraktur. It's off the new CD, soon to be released. But first, Senior Sam on the Sam Cam. You're watching Stories, Wisdom, and Recipes. Thank you.
How's it going? I hope you're enjoying the show. Stories, wisdom, and recipes here. My name is Lawrence Pugliese. You just heard a tune by OK Patty off their new CD coming out soon called Fracture. And he also enjoyed a little bit of the Sam Cam with Senor Sam Stavala cooking for this garden party OK Patio episode. Thank you for tuning in. We have with us now at the picnic table two very talented young men from northeastern Pennsylvania. Tom Flannery, playwright, among other things, and Jack Evans, actor, director, producer. And we're going to talk about politics, sex, booze, and the theater. Adult language and themes. <laughs> All right. So, guys, how are you? Great. How you doing, Mike? Good, good. Thanks good. for hanging out. Appreciate hey, it. Always happy to be invited. Yeah, it's, it's a nice time. It's a, it's a July evening. Beautiful. Beautiful the, weather, the weather didn't do us in. Absolutely not. We got lucky. Are you ready to talk a little bit sure. about yeah. uh, theater and stuff? I, I, have, I have some questions. Bring it on. I'll bring it on. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can outdo Bob and Lori. Well, uh, probably coming not, up later, so we'll see them. They were, yeah, you're right. They are coming up later. But early on, didn't you see what they were doing in the, well, maybe we should mention <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Sorry, Meyer and Valerie. Just kidding. Uh, I want to ask you something very general. Both of you guys are, are, are steeped in, in local theater in many ways. What's so special about the theater? To you. In general? In general. What's so special about the theater? Why should people give a damn about the theater? Do people give a damn about movies? Mm. Do people give a damn about television? People love to be entertained. Um, <laughs> the, only, the only difference with the, with the theater is, guess what? You get to see people doing it live in front of your eyes. You, know? mm. it, 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 you, watch, you watch Saturday Night Live and you don't really get that, that, that feeling that anything could go wrong at any moment. The immediacy, you know? the immediacy yeah, of it neat. is, is um, makes it, um, it's, it just makes it so much more interesting. Anything could happen at any time, and, free, and does. I mean, um, we go see this show, we've done this show for two weeks now, and it's never been the same twice. Does that make you guys nervous? No. It All makes me nervous. Does it? Yeah. it makes him nervous. Yeah. He's the playwright. The playwright yeah. Sure. It, yeah. It, 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 for me, it's part of the energy of the, of the entire piece. I mean, you, that, that's part of the beauty of, of, of live theater. I mean, you, you, but it's you, a nervous energy. It's not a, bad, it's not a bad nervous, like, oh, my God, you're waiting for something bad to happen. It, it's, it's the kind of nervousness that keeps you on your toes and, and, you know, like, I can't wait to see what's coming around the bend. You know part I mean? of an actor's job is, is to take... The, the the energy that they may feel, whether it be nervous energy or fear or whatever, and and take it and switch it and translate it into an energy that is going to make an audience really, really, really come into the to the piece. And and that's being accomplished with uh, politics, sex, booze, in oh, the theater. Yeah. Would you say is, oh, it, yeah. is this sort of energy? Oh this, yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. We have we have a pretty we have a very energetic cast um, of of just. Uh, um, and you know who, and Jack as the director has has um, c you know they've come up with with all of these ideas. I mean the script on paper, you know, it just kind of lays there. You know, it doesn't mean anything. It's not until you it's not until it gets you, you put it on the stage that it actually means anything. It's you know before it's on the stage you put it in the drawer. It doesn't mean anything. Right. You know, um, a play is meant to be seen. It's not meant to be read. Um, so, as a playwright, you need to be able to be, you need to be able to relinquish control of your little creation and hand it off to somebody that you trust. And you trust Jack. And I, I trust sure. Jack. Yeah. And so, and so, basically, um, I'll hand it off to Jack, and we'll talk a little bit, and um, and then he kind of takes the ball and runs with it. And if he if if he has a question or needs some clarification, he'll ask. Um, if I see something that if I have a suggestion, I'll ask. But essentially, you know, um, my role is, is once once it's handed over, my role is is trying desperately to stay out of the way. In terms of, of arts, of art and, and um, all forms, theater, music is really exciting. Yeah. There's a lot of great stuff going on around town. There really is. I agree. And I. 
I commend you guys for being a part of that. Well, you know, our goal is with with Scranton Public Theater, and, and Jack agrees with me, is to try to um, is to try to do try to convince theater groups around here to take a chance with um, with new work, you know, work that hasn't been done before. Um, you know, there's a lot of work, a lot, a lot of local theaters here that do quality work. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of shows that get done over and over again. Yeah, Neil Simon yeah. and Neil Simon. And, and, I, mean, I like Neil you Simon. Know, a lot I of do, music, how much? You know, and a lot of the a lot same of musicals. The same mu Annie, Fiddler on the Roof. You know, you, you, I think you it's cool it. that Dracula is going on this weekend, too. Yeah, exactly. Something I mean, different. You know, how something often do you get to see Dracula in the middle of the summer? I know, it's, it's pretty, I you think, know, I, I, think that, I think that's an interesting idea just there. But, I mean, really, when it comes down to it, it's not about trying to put it in a, dif in a different season, it's more about this is what our season is, and, and we have uh, the ability to put up a good production of Dracula. Dracula's going on at Nayog Park, also, also uh, this weekend, just this the 29th weekend, of July, is, 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 the, the, last, last is the last weekend of Dracula. Yeah, I mean, we don't want this to be known as, you know, okay, this is the local show. I mean, this is just a show. Right. You know what I mean? It just happens to be done by local show. guys, you know what I mean? I don't want to be known as. You know the local playwright. I'm just a just a playwright. You know right. what difference does it make where I hang my hat? Really? Well, we had a we had a one or two great ones from here already. Y right? Yeah. I mean, it's possible, quite well, this possible. Is, this is the Jason you know? Miller Summer Theater is, Festival. Yeah, exactly. And this is the That's kind of thing that you know he always wanted to do. You know he always wanted to give new playwrights um, a chance, like the chance he was given. Um, you know, back when he was even younger than me. You know, when by he Joe got, Papp. By Joe Papp, even earlier by the people involved with the University of Scranton, that, mm -hmm. the, his teachers at the University of Scranton that said, you know, there's something, there's something about this guy, you know, we should pay more attention to him, you know. I think I have time maybe for two more questions, but we have to get to them kind of succinctly. Okay. Uh, do you believe plays should, plays should deal with politics? Do you believe they should deal with politics? Not just human politics, I mean politics uh, coming out of government. What's the difference? <laughs> well, um, no, human no, politics is what you and I are doing right honestly, now. Honestly, I, I don't believe plays should deal with politics. I believe plays have the same right to deal with politics as, as anyone talking in a, in, a, in a normal conversation. Plays can deal with whatever the play needs to deal with and whatever the playwright decides that, that he or she wants to put forth. Okay, cool. Thank you. Mr. Flannery, um, coming it, from the playwright. Yeah, well, you know, politics is, you know, despite what, whatever your colors are, I mean, politics is interesting. You know what I mean? And, and, and ultimately, you know, what you, what you put on the stage, you try to make it interesting as well. You know, um, I find politics myself, I find it, you know, fascinating and repellent at the same time. But I mean, you know, what that's a great combination. You know, I mean, that, that's a wonderful combination, you know, because it, it pulls you in and then it, it pulls you in and then it disgusts you at the same time. <laughs> so you, you get, you know, it's, you, you know, you're moving forward and you're moving back and you're moving forward and you're moving back. And, you know, um, it's and, a dance of some and, sort. Yeah, in this day and age, you know, how could you not, how could you not be at least, if not interested in it, you know, aware of it. And, and even, the ma even some of the stuff, politics permeates in some way probably every, everything that we do. Every aspect of it. Absolutely, yeah. you know, and, and you know, the, these plays are, you know, there's nothing, these plays are comedies. I mean, these plays are light. They're comedies. They're, they're comedies, you know, I mean, and, you know. You will um, laugh. You know, hopefully like you'll laugh. never laughed before. You know, the, the audiences that we have had. Have Belly laughter? <laughs> oh, yeah. The audiences that we have had have, have, have walked out of there with smiles bigger than, than I've seen, you know, on, on a, as a whole, you know, an audience just, just all walking out like, wow, that wow, was, that, that, was, that, was that was great. great. That you was know, amazing. And we think, you know, that must be a good feeling to see that. We think you can definitely, and we think, you know, it is from a, from a comedic standpoint, you know, you can skewer both sides. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I mean, uh, equally. You know, I don't. Can we do? You mean the, the right wing <laughs> conservative, the, you know, because you know, ultra liberal. The ultra -liberal cause, you know, when you think about it, you know, if you get far enough to the right and you get far enough to the it's left, zealotry, eventually way. you're meeting in the behind. You know, yeah, good way of looking so at so um, you know, you have you have ideologues on both sides, 
and um, it's fun to make fun of them, you know. I, just, you know. And people like to see them made fun of. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and if people yeah. think, you know, um, if people think, okay, well, he's making fun of me, but he's making fun of him, too. Well, you know, they, it's they, fair. That's all right. That's yeah. fair. It is. It's yeah. fair. It's, it's very fair. It's a, fair. Lot, a lot of people, I mean. You, so that's going on in, this, in these works, these four plays? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very Excellent. much so. Very much oh, so. Very what a time. We need, listening to all the spin doctors, why, why not go underneath the tent and hear how you guys perceive it through intelligence and humor with great actors. Or hear All how, this that's going on or in hear our how anyone system. perceives it. Right. You know? yeah, yeah, and absolutely. you can even talk to each other. Yeah, you know, I've been thinking about that too. These sons and guns are. Yeah, it's, it's not like right we, 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 don't, we don't feel like we have had yeah, any, any, any answers no. Right. No. or have cornered any kind of market on anything. Uh -uh. It, uh, I as, don't think as, any. As, as human beings, it's just uh, obvious to see how funny. The conflict is right, and yeah. that's what we're making fun of. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Excellent, excellent. Again, politics, sex, booze in the theater, with uh, Tom Flannery, playwright, and director Jack Evans, and some of the actors. You said there are there are four productions, uh, ten roles, six actors and actresses playing those roles. Uh, what a what a cast! It sounds like Ellen O'Brien. Jason Sherry, Creighton Amos, Greg Corin, John Morris, and myself. Excellent, excellent. And I want to ask you now one more question. You know the question it is. If you've ever watched the show, it's the same question I ask everybody. Um, actually, I'm going to ask you too, and real quick, first things that pop your head, and you, you are the, uh, the, the one because of time. Your favorite playwrights? Um, Connor McPherson, um, Irish playwright. Um, Martin McDonough, another Irish playwright. Um, those are probably, both of them are younger than me, They're, both of them are in their 20s, and uh, Martin McDonough is, is um, to me, the, the, one of the most fascinating um, Irish playwrights to come ar around in 30 years, and um, he has a play on Broadway now called The Pillow Man. What, what, and, what style of those? Um, uh, Beauty Cleveland Linane. Um, I mean, he, um, funny and, um, um... Is he a Samuel Beckett sort, or...? Uh, no, no, he, he's, he's funny and brutal. I, I, that's how I would describe him. He was, he's funny and brutal and, and, and fearless. And, uh, I, I admire his work, and he's still in his 20s. Thank you. Jack, how would you describe Tom as a playwright? I would describe Tom as a playwright... Um, as a guy who has a lot of really interesting and funny things to say and yet is still careful um, and really cares about every word that he puts down on that page. Um, I, 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 I've never read a script by Tom and I've read a lot of scripts <laughs> yeah. by Tom because he does write a lot. He's got to be the most prolific writer I've ever met in my life. I've never read a script by Tom where where anything, where any line was not so thought out that it was even in the process, in, 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 the, in the production process, in the direction and, and production process, you end up having to cut. And with Tom's work, it's hard. Because it fits so well. It's hard to cut, yeah. That's excellent. Yeah. That's excellent. And when you say he's careful, what do you mean by that? Because he knows what he wants to say. Okay. And he, and he wants to say it in a, in, a, in a way that will bring across the, the, the reaction that he wants to get from an, audi from an audience. You know, the goal is excellent. If, you can you. Get, if you can get, if you can use 10 words instead of 20, use 10. Yeah. You know, and it, because if, you, if you're dealing with a director as smart as Jack and you use 20, He's going to know you should have used 10, and he's going to say, mm. and he's going to make those noises, and, you, and you're going to know. You're anticipating the noises Absolutely. while you're and writing. Because you're not going to fool him. You know what I mean? He's going to know. He's going to say, you know what? You know, that, that needs to be cut down. And, and so what I try to do is I'll, I'll look at it, and I'll say, you know, even before, and I'll say, you know what? That's 50 words, in it, and it, it, it could be 20. So if you can edit yourself, 
you know, before you hand it, it off. Saves a lot of time. It saves a lot of time because, <laughs> because believe me, he's not going to be shy about s suggesting. Get that out of there. Get that out of there. You Come know here. what I mean? So if I can hand him something where there's a minimum of, of things that need to be taken out, then that makes, that, that's good. Well, it sounds like a wonderful relationship you guys have as artists. And uh, I'm happy that you're here in northeastern Pennsylvania. And I, I strongly suggest that everybody go see the work that they're putting out there for you, for you. Politics, sex, booze, and the theater. This weekend, if you're watching before July 29th, might be an extended uh, run. Keep your ears and eyes open. And in the future, I'm sure these two guys will be doing a lot of other things together. Support Scranton Public Theater. You're watching Stories, Wisdom, and Recipes, and I want to say thank you guys for coming on the thank show. Thank you. You really classed it up. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. That's the first time anybody said that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I got to go through my little ending diatribe. So you guys can have beers now. Well, tomato juice is over there. Beer is over there. Thanks for tuning in to our garden party episode. We'll see you in about a month. I'm taking a bit of a break for a few weeks. Uh, be sure to check out the first annual Scranton Jazz Festival, the weekend of August 6th and 7th, starting at 2 p.m. at Hanlon's Grove in New York Park. And as I mentioned, uh, the theatrical productions put on by Scranton Public Theater, Dracula, also at Hanlon's Grove, the weekend of the 29th. I'm not sure what time that starts. Check the papers. 8.30, .30 Jack tells me. <laughs> and uh, also, we have Tom Flannery's four plays called Politics, Sex, booze in the theater the same weekend you want to check those out at McDade Park and they start at 8 30. So there you have it, another episode of Stories, Wisdom and Recipes. It's a pleasure helping in some small way my fellow Northeastern Pennsylvanians enjoy their community in all its wit, artistry, passion and many forms of human genius as I see it. As my friend John once said, don't fret and try to figure this out. I still have it. The still is yet the best to become. He moved to France, though. <laughs> one less great one here. That means you have to pick up the slack. <laughs> Thanks for watching again. Until next time, remember your stories, wisdom, and recipes. Once again, OK Patty with their great, great tune off their first CD called The Wave. Bye-bye.
that flame. That's what they want. They do. See, it's like a little spray bottle. Mm -hmm. When that flares up, they, they squirt it because they don't want that. Oh. They want to cook with the coals, not the flame. Ah, uh, I see. At least that was the theory. Now, what the, I don't know if it works or not, to be honest with you. I don't know. Yeah, see, that fat drips down in there. That's what it makes. Mm -hmm. I see. Two good men right here. Two good hey, men. Hey, take this. Two, two young men. Two good young men. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. There's a young lady over there with the camera on you guys. I think it's because yeah. she's trying to attract you. <laughs> yeah, good thing. Here we go. Now, wait, have a little beer? Bon appetit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See, the first thing they notice is shoes. The first thing you, my husband notices is the hair. Oh, that's right. It's the truth, John. That's, that's true. But that's the first thing you notice. That's something, isn't it? I heard him talking to Charles. The trees has always looked perfect. <laughs> yeah, and I, that's good. That's, he asked them if they wear clothes. I'll be church and look at all the guys here. Did you know uh, uh, I'm going on a break. Take a break, Daddy. You want me to turn the grill off?